Hi, I'm Steve Young. I'm with the Professional Division of Music Group, which involves the brands Midas, Clark Technique, and Turbo Sound. And we're here at Full Compass today to talk about the brand new Midas M32 digital mixing console. Now, there's been a lot of buzz in the industry forums out there about this console. Uh, it was originally first shown to the public back uh, January 2014. Um, a lot of folks have been talking about it and asking a lot of questions about it. Um, the other company involved within Music Group, of course, is Behringer, and they have the very successful X32 mixer, which shares an operating system with the new M32. Uh, it makes perfect sense for us to do this, since the Midas engineers contributed greatly to the operating system of the X32. We've now brought that into a hardware platform that's worthy of the Midas name. So in addition to the operating system, uh, some other things about the M32 that differentiate it from the X32 would be the microphone preamps. We use the same beautiful sounding high gain preamps from our Pro Series mixers in the M32. Contributes very much to that sonic signature that people are used to with Midas consoles. Additionally, your tactile interface is going to feel like a Midas. Your faders, uh, very smooth, very accurate, one million cycle motorized faders. These also come from our Pro Series of console design, ensuring long life and extremely good accuracy. Other differences hardware-wise, encoders, buttons, the surface itself. The surface itself is stainless steel along with carbon fiber accents, some increased bracing internally to minimize flexing when it's out on the road. Just again, a whole package that is worthy of the Midas name. But operation-wise, it's functioning the same exact way as our sister company X32 product does. Idea being there again, if you have a show file that you've created on an X32, you can bring that X32 show file, plug it directly into the M32, and recall all the functionality of that show file. Additionally, all the great remote control functionality that you have with the X32 is available with the M32 as well, including our iOS app, our editors for Mac, PC, and Linux, and also our iPhone application, which works well for personal monitoring, will be made available for the M32 platform. To elaborate a little bit more on our iOS control, I have the iPad application up here right now. We also will have an Android application, as well as two uh, computer-based applications uh, for both Windows as well as Mac platform, and in all likelihood, a, a Linux platform too by the end of the year. Uh, the iOS application is very comprehensive. It's great for mixing shows remotely where you've got small amounts of space uh, and, and simply can't put an operator there or have an op operator at an optimum listening position. You can walk around the room and, and mix off the iOS application and an iPad. Really all you need to do that is a very inexpensive router. Uh, I suggest setting that router up to be hidden and limit the amount of IP addresses that can be assigned through DHCP. You go to your console, hit the setup screen, match the network address to the iPad uh, settings for the iOS application, and you're up and going. The neat thing about the iOS application is that every function that you have on the M32 digital mixer is represented also in the iPad application. So our channels are assignable here in banks of eight. We can actually make those move remotely, of course. We want to take a look at what's going on on an individual channel. We hit the button and then left to right, just like on the console, we have tabs that represent the preamp section, dynamic section, EQ section, and sends. I oftentimes use the iPad application without a dedicated monitor engineer. If I'm mixing monitors and there's only one console at front of house, this allows me to walk the stage, bring up the sends on a per channel basis to get the optimum monitor levels, make any changes that I might need to make in the effects section. Take a look at our effects section here and we can go over to where the equalizers are. It would allow us to then at that point notch those equalizers based upon whatever frequency response or feedback issues we might be having at each monitor location. Um, metering is also one of my favorite things on the iPad application. So regardless of what screen you're looking at on the M32, I find it very handy to have the iPad application running, if nothing else, just for the metering. So you can see instantaneously exactly what's going into and out of the console uh, without having to dedicate your screen to that functionality. Basically frees up your screen on the console to visualize other things that you might be needing to adjust. 
So that's just some of the applications that you can use the uh, iPad application for. Uh, again, this is also available in a computer format if you're more comfortable with that. And uh, we'll be talking more about that as additional releases come throughout uh, the balance of this year and other platforms. Operation-wise, it makes a lot of sense for folks who are transitioning to their first digital desk to consider the M32. Navigation is very similar to an analog console. You start left to right on the console, select a channel, and you instantly see here on this very ergonomic surface the navigation that you need to set proper gain structure through the preamp, dynamic controls with gate and a built-in compressor, a very powerful four-band equalizer, traditional analog style controls for your mix bus sends, and then your main bus panning and so forth is here. Easy access to all the screens, controls uh, directly below there for navigation, selecting a channel and selecting the, the uh, uh, portion of the channel strip that you wish to adjust brings that up instantaneously in the screen. Additionally, there are touch controls throughout the version 2.0 firmware going forward that's included on the M32 that automatically switches to that channel as you touch that fader. You can also reconfigure that in your global settings if you want that to be triggered by the select button instead of by fader movement. Mix capabilities, you've got 16 mix buses. Those can be swapped out in pairs to be subgroups for processing through the stereo effects rack instead of mix buses. Um, but the mix buses can be set up pre or post fader, pre or post EQ, and again can be assigned to the uh, virtual effects rack. Speaking about the virtual effects rack, I'll pop it up here. Eight stereo slots. Everybody has their own preferences of how they configure the stereo effects rack. The left side of the effects rack can be set up to be sidechain or insert. The right side is insert only. So your first four slots of the virtual stereo effect rack show up with returns on the third layer of the console. That's the other great thing about the M32 is your navigation is so simple. You've got 16 faders here on your input section. You toggle one through 16 on the first layer. 17 through 32 on the second layer. You notice the scribble strips can also be coated with icons in various colors. The last layer is your auxiliary input section. These reflect analog balance tip ring sleeve inputs on the back of the console, perfect for wireless, your iPod input, things of that sort. And then your four stereo effect returns from the first four stereo slots uh, of the effects rack show up also on that third layer. Over here in the master section, you have eight DCAs, which allow you great secondary level control over groups of instruments. You've also got your main bus sends here, bus one through eight, nine through 16. Main output section here on the right. Quick access for recall to functions that you may do on a regular basis. As an example, we have this set up to recall the primary reverb in this show file with the other button, button here to the left muting the primary reverb. Our two continuous controllers are set up to adjust the size of the reverb room and the decay. Likewise, our next controls here, I have set up to control the delay uh, and also to mute the delay, allowing us to adjust not only time, but also feedback for that delay. Any navigation that you're typically doing on a regular basis on the main screen can be assigned to these banks of controllers. You've got eight buttons, four encoders that can be set up in three different banks. Makes it very intuitive for operators that are using the same type of uh, recall on a regular basis, for instance, for the lead singer's microphone or primary monitor mix equal equalization, things of that sort. Uh, all of your inputs and outputs on the console, uh, local plus the stage box can be addressed separately in eight channel blocks. You've got, uh, you've got 32 mic pre's built directly on the console with XLR ends on the back, 16 outputs, two AES-50 buses operating at 48 kilohertz. Those can work with uh, the optional DL-16 stage box and also with several other forthcoming Midas products that uh, are from our Pro Series coming up with new firmware updates in the near future, which will allow them to also work with the M32 at 48 kilohertz. Comprehensive monitor and talkback section. Um, some really neat new revisions in the latest firmware, including RTA overlays for all of your equalizers, both channel EQ and main out EQs, and lots of customizable uh, setup things that allow the operator to really make the most intuitive setup for any application on the M32. There's lots more to learn about the M32. Uh, I encourage you to check out the M32 at fullcompass.com or talk to your Full Compass sales representative for more information. Thank you very much.